uh, to this now, which looks sad to see, uh, almost uh, a loss of his bodily functions and motor skills. Concerns for Conor McGregor's mental state of mind are at play at the moment. I watched Roadhouse for the first time this morning featuring Conor McGregor. For the entire film, he's got that manical look in his eye. He's, he's got that grimace. He's wide-eyed. It's almost like they fed him drugs to keep him going for the entire movie. I can imagine... Conor to set, please. <laughs> Uh, that that's what I imagine. He was just completely off his fa off his face for the entire film, and uh, a few things have have been brought into this. I'm going to show you some footage from a, a video uh, that that I watched this morning. Something dark is happening to Conor McGregor from Kiarcho. Uh, give him a give him a shout out. Give him a subscribe. Go check him out. So he Conor made this McGregor video. Went from speaking like this. I want to do what's right and just. And do my part. That's it. I think you know it's, it's our, our duty as humans to give back. To speaking like this. Arrogant people, yeah. Why? What's why? Why am I wearing waist weight? Right, right. I'm, a, I'm going and I'm going until I'm dead or you're dead. That's we all know, Conor. So that's just a bit of context into what's going on with Conor McGregor, how he was composed and now he's speaking erratically in interviews. Now a new interview came out this morning. Um, of Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal uh, promoting Roadhouse and he was having spasms, muscle spasms, and he was talking really slow and weird and almost like he, he couldn't catch his breath and he was, he, he just doesn't look right and concerns have been emerging from all over social media about his, his state of mind and his drug use and stuff like that. Now, we're going to take a look at this and then I'll play that, that interview after. He likes to party, let's be honest. So it may be easy to pass this off as just having a bit of recreational fun at an event. However, he himself said in the same interview that he isn't drinking. I'm not going to drink it. This will be I'm not going to drink because I'm going to train three times today. And I tell you why. When I trained this morning, I don't usually train three times. I just feel like three times today. I'm a little man. It's quite refreshing. It's willpower, yeah? Oh, yeah, I'm impressed. Why should we celebrate for this, yeah? <laughs> the thing's winking at me. Look at the cream on top of that. You need a, you need the spill. Also, this is... He's talking about willpower, but he already seems off cut like he's been doing 10 lines a day and he's had a few beers already. I mean, I get I get some people like a beer and they enjoy a beer, but when, when you put a beer down in front of someone and they're struggling and almost like drooling and frothing over the fucking beer and or whatever that substance is and they're struggling to, they, they've got a problem. They, they're 100% got a problem. If you put something down in front of someone and they... They have these impulses to eat or drink whatever's in front of them or take whatever's in front of them. They, they've got a problem without a fucking shadow of a doubt. An isolated occurrence with the amount of worrying interviews stacking up in which Connor can be seen adopting many symptoms of chronic drug use. From constantly licking his lips and touching his face to having very little spatial awareness and blaming his erratic behaviour on potent coffee beans. Yeah, it gives me this coffee, it was called a cappuccino, it's Cuban coffee. It's unbelievable, but you're, you're running around doing laps. He's definitely on. Yeah, co Cuban coffee beans, that's it, Connor. Wink, wink. I mean, <laughs> fucking hell. Like, it doesn't get any more. It, it, he's so erratic in what he's saying, and none of it really truly makes sense. Like, yeah, the Cuban coffee beans are what are, make, are what are making you uh, act and behave like this. That's that's surely it. Anyway, uh, we move on to the interview that's been circling last night with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. And we'll take a look at what that was, and he's spasming, and the way he's talking, and the impacts and the toll that it's having on Conor McGregor. Bring to the table from the realism when it came to the fight game. Jake's a consummate professional, 75 movies made. You know, I was, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie. As you can see there, if you keep an eye on his shoulders, his, his shoulders are twitching, his eyes are blinking, he's, he's twitching, he's struggling to get his words out. Yeah, it, it's kind of concerning to see Conor McGregor like this, going from how he, he was originally composed and, you know, articulated and coherent. People could understand what he, he used to say. And then he went to that from, to this manical speaking of a thousand words a minute, slurring his words, not being able to understand the guy uh, to this now, which looks sad to see uh, almost uh, a loss of his bodily functions and motor skills. Alongside him, he was patient with me. He gave me guidance and I just took it, you know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. 
I have 75 bar fights, mate. And that's it. We had a good back. And I, sometimes I had to remind him. <laughs> I, la I landed one punch. Once. And, and he hit me with a door. <laughs> Other than that, it was absolutely perfect. That's got, true. An amazing stunt, a stunt team, Garrett Warden and Steve Brown. And they were phenomenal with us. They gave us free reign. And we've done a good job. For you, Connor, at all because you've been in so many real fights to, to realize, yeah, I'm trying to make this look real, but you know, I am acting. For me, what was hard was it was time consuming 18 hours on set, very little rest. It was strange to me, but you know, the fight scenes, I was happy to give my as you can see, he's, he's struggling. The, the guy is really, really struggling to get his words out taking is pausing between words not between sentences we're talking about between words is is twitching is it, it it does not look like the conor mcgregor that we're used to in any way shape or form i've never seen a conor mcgregor interview quite like this uh, where he's struggling to get his words out and he's twitching uh, we've seen him off his face you know manical talking fast um you know really alert and We've seen the opposite where he's being composed and, you know, articulated, but we've never quite seen a Connor look like this. Input and my or and Jake, as I said, is a consummate professional. We've done a good job. You check it out for yourself. Roadhouse 2024, so, Amazon. It looks like he's struggling with, uh, I mean, the load of uh, promoting Roadhouse, that will have an impact on his lifestyle if he is drinking and doing drugs and, and partying still, as well as promoting. He, he's done a, a big, massive, uh, I think it's a world tour, or he's done a, he's done a tour, promotion promotional tour, doing the rounds, doing the interviews, and it's probably taken a toll on him. But I don't think it's just that. It's probably his lifestyle, his partying, his drinking, and alleged drug use. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.